Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, this is Steve McMillan, the first. Just wanted to uh, reach back out to you. Um, really enjoyed our conversation and Q&A's awesome questions we had uh, last week. This week, just wanted to uh, touch base um, and talk a little bit about uh, calls and puts. Um, those are the options uh, we kind of briefly went over. Um, I want to give you a website. Um, it's marketwatch.com. If you're going to get into the investment game and just really kind of uh, start uh, looking at some various different things, whether it's stocks, whether it's the options or what have you, um, you want to really go to marketwatch.com. It is a public uh, domain. And you see I have it here uh, right now. Um, when you look at the top part here, um, up in the right left corner, you see the Dow. That's the Dow Jones, average the major index. You have the S&P 500, have the NASDAQ that tracks the technologies. Um, there's a global Dow as well. I don't pay attention to that, but I do pay attention to gold. I pay attention to oil. Um, today is Monday, um, and we're really looking at, uh, see how the Dow went up 129 points, but the NASDAQ technology sector failed um, 30 points. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the market. I uh, would like for you guys to keep keep track of all that stuff as well. Um, just looking for uh, where I can do some highlighting here. Hold on one second. Okay, now you see that you, we have uh, the indexes. You have the Dow, um, this large index. You have the S&P 500, uh, some of the top 500 companies in the market. You have the NASDAQ, which tracks the uh, top technology stocks. The, the global Dow is uh, overall, I don't look at that too much. I look at those top three. I also look at to see what gold is doing. Because when you have, uh, you always hear that gold is a hedge against an inflation. So when you have things in a recession, normally gold goes up. But over these past six years, gold has been, you know, in a, in a kind of a trending pattern. I remember about 10 years ago, gold, as you can see, it's like 1,221.70 cents an ounce. Um, it was about $370 an ounce back then. I also track oil oil as well but what i really want to do is look at um want to look at our uh um our, our stocks and things of that nature so what i'm going to do is you see the search button over to the right here um what we want to do is look at apple computers and we're going to look at our calls and our puts okay so you go into the search button over to the right and you search for a stock by their ticker symbol. And what a ticker symbol means is the identifier of that stock. So if you take Apple computers, for instance, it's AAPL. So you have a lot of different ones, but the top one, it says Apple Incorporated right here. It says Apple and that's Apple computers. We'll click on that one. And let me go ahead here and remove this. Um, clear the drawing over here. Clear my arrow. Okay. So we have Apple computers. It says after hours trading. Now keep in mind that, uh, let me clear that. When you're on market watch, there's going to be a lot of advertisements that pop up and things like that since it is a public domain. And that's how they kind of, they make their money. So what we're going to do is look at Apple Computer. It says after hours. Keep in mind that um, the stock market closes 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you're in Colorado, that's 2 o'clock here. The East is uh, two hours ahead. So Apple Computers, the closing time right here. Um, when it closed, it was $143.50, okay? So that's the stock that we're looking at today, okay? Now what we're also going to look at is the calls and puts. When we talk about options, now you see a tab that says options. Okay, we're gonna look at um, options. We're gonna talk a little bit about what a call is, a little bit about what a put is, and we'll get more into that during our regular training sessions. Okay, so I'm gonna click on options, and it's gonna give you an option chain. Okay, it says option chain for Apple computers. That's the July 
17. Let me scroll down a little bit here. The July 17th. And I'm going to use this as an example, but normally we will go out um, a few months or what, what have you, and the prices will vary, and I'll show you that in a minute. So now, as you've seen, Apple Computer was $143.50. Okay. Right here, um, let me go here and grab my little pointer. As you can see, these are calls right here. Uh, and these are the puts on this side. Okay. So Apple was $143.50. And when it's highlighted in this area, you see the highlighted $143.50. Let me scroll down a little bit so you can uh, take a peek here. Okay, the $143.50 right here is a current price as of today's close. Okay, now when you're looking at the calls on the right hand side, you're looking at the puts on the left hand side. When you're looking at those, you, when, when you have a call, the traditional thing is the investor that's investing in the call is expecting the price of the stock to go up. Okay. So if we're at, uh, these are strike prices in the middle, you have a $140 strike price right here. I'm gonna highlight that. See the $140 strike price. So with the $143.50 price of the stock, that option is in the money, which is good. So as you can see, it's a little higher. There's a bid, um, bid and an ask price. Let me scroll up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. You see there's a bid and there's an ask. Normally when you're buying the option, the market's going to want to sell it to you at the ask. They're going to try to get as much money as they can. And so we'll talk about going in as a limit and purchasing at a limit. So you put your own price in there between the bid and the ask and see if it, you can purchase it that way and you'll get a better price for it if it does fill at your limit price, the price that you ask. So you always don't have to go into the market um, to purchase the price. You can go in and just uh, put your price in. So take for instance, we're looking at the $140 call option. So say we're expecting it to go up, okay? There's a $3.60, which is in $100, $360, by the ass of $395. So if you want to purchase it for $375, you'll put your limit in that way. And we'll get more into in-depth detail with our training. So now if we're expecting the price of the stock to go down with puts, that's what you will purchase the put for. That's just one of our strategies in reference to purchasing and buying options. However, that is not our primary strategy. We'll talk about that you know, at a later date. But as you can see, with puts, it's $143.50. The $140 strike price, as you can see up here, it says strike, these are all the strike prices. It's out of the money. And so they're very cheap. And this is, this is July expiration. So they expire on, uh, these expire expire on July 7th, which is actually this, this Friday. Uh, oh, next Friday, next Friday, this Friday. Yes, July 7th is this Friday. <laughs> Sorry about that, but July 7th, they expire this Friday. And normally we won't do the same week on when we're purchasing, if we're purchasing at all. Okay, so these are out of the money by uh, two dollars and fifty cents, or three dollars and fifty cents, because they're dollar and forty three fifty, and there's a hundred forty dollars strike price. They're only twenty dollars by twenty four dollars, and every third Friday, the options expire, depending on which month that you're looking at. You have monthly expiration, you have weekly expirations as well. Okay, so. 
when you're expecting the price of a stock to go down, we will purchase a put. When you're expecting the price to go up, we will purchase calls. Like I mentioned earlier, that is not our primary objective. Our primary objective, when you're purchased, what does that mean to you? When you're purchasing, you're buying something. So you're spending money. What we like to do is write cover calls, sell puts, write credit spreads where we're bringing money into the account, like we explained last week, okay? So just take, for instance, these are the Julys. We're gonna close the Julys out, and we're going to look at um, a September. So we close Julys, and when you cl click on the July, it'll close all the options, change out, and we'll go down to September 2017. And then we're going to look at the same 140 calls and look at the, okay, let's go to the strike price again. Okay. Here's a strike price. There's a price of stock that closed. And as you can see, the further you go out, the more expensive the options will be. So you look at the 140 calls, it's $775 by $790. Okay, if you look at the puts, for $435 by 450. Okay, then we'll, you'll see these numbers on the side. Those are the volume of options um, that's outstanding that people have purchased, okay? And we'll talk about volume in depth, things of that nature. So keep in mind when you're purchasing a call, you're expecting the price to go up. When you're purchasing a put, you're expecting the price to go down. Okay, so these are, and you could do this with any any stock um, or index. The S and P five hundred. Um, they have different ticker symbols. You can do it with the Nasdaq that has a different ticker symbol. You can do it with some electronically traded funds. They're called ETFs as well that track oil, that track uh, the Nasdaq, uh, things of that nature. But we'll get into all that in our other training. I just wanted to touch base with you and kind of really show you what a call option is, what a put option is, and the purpose of a call when people purchase calls and when people purchase puts. Remember, calls traditionally purchasing the call, it will go up. Purchasing a put, we're looking for the stock to go down. Now, when we're looking at selling or writing a call option or selling or writing a put option, it's the inverse. When we're looking, when you sell a call, you look for the price to go down. Or write a call, you look for a price to go down. You sell a put, you look for the price to go up. Um, well, just stay tuned. We're going to continue to keep doing some of this. And uh, um, we're going to continue to keep, keep doing this.